age three, um, that was the first time that I remember being called chubby and fat by my family and where I started internalizing it. At age five, I quit gymnastics because I was so scared that I looked fat in my leotard and that was also the age that my mom told me um, I wasn't allowed to eat junk food when I went to my dad's house for March break because my belly was too fat. Um, at age 11, um, that's where I started getting so obsessed with the fact that I was fat, thinking that I, I was huge, that I started starving myself um, and I stopped bringing lunch to school. Um, and I ended up getting sick at that age and I was really happy that I was losing weight on the scale because I was too sick to eat. I had been yo-yo dieting since 13, but at this age, age 18, um, I was yo-yo dieting so much and so obsessively that I could drop weight really, really fast. And in that picture, I had just lost 20 pounds in three weeks. Um, I was weighing myself every single hour and I was exercising obsessively five hours a day. Uh, at this age, um, I was 23 and I was 40 pounds away from my most heaviest weight and I was starting to see health problems including sleep apnea where um, I would stop breathing seven times a night and partially stop breathing 86 times a night. And here I am today at age 32 and I have not engaged in my eating disorder in over two years. Um, over the last year that Kyle and I have been on YouTube, we've talked here and there about emotional eating and, and binge eating and things like that, but I needed to work my way up to share um, the rest of my story with you guys. And the rest of my story is that I've been struggling with an eating disorder since I was five years old. Um, at five, I thought I was fat. Um, I had something called I body dysmorphic disorder where I thought I was so much bigger than I was and eventually I became so obsessed with getting small that I actually ended up going opposite and making myself huge. Uh, I was officially diagnosed with an eating disorder, something called binge eating disorder, at age 20. And I let it go so long. I knew that I had, that there was something wrong, but I wasn't ready to deal with it. I knew eventually that I would get through it because that's just who I was, but I wasn't ready to actually face it head on quite yet. Through my entire childhood, um, I was never as big as I thought that I was, and you guys can see that from the pictures, um, but I became obsessed, and I had a pretty tough childhood, and I think that food and weight seemed to be the only thing that I thought I could control, so that's what I went to, and I spent my entire life controlling food, um, under eating, overeating, hiding food, sneaking food, becoming obsessed with my stomach, with my body, with my weight, with the scale. Um, I started actually dieting at age 13, but at age 11, I would make a lunch, put it in the fridge, wait till everybody was asleep, eat everything in my lunch, but leave my lunch pail in the fridge so that my family would think that I was taking lunch to school. But really what I was doing was I was binging and then I would starve myself all day at school and then when nobody was looking, I would come and, and sneak food. Um, at 13, I started dieting and you know, eating very, very little. 
or sometimes not eating until my parents were around and then I would eat to make it appear like I was eating normally. Um, then when I was in high school, I started obsessively yo-yo dieting, dropping massive amounts of weight really, really fast and then gaining it all back because I was, I was binging. Um, I started with starving myself and then it slowly went into binging and purging where I tried to make myself throw up. Um, I remember one day where it was just me and my dog home and I decided to try to make myself throw up because I had just had a huge binge and I was feeling really guilty and I was scared of gaining weight. So I started trying to make myself throw up but I couldn't. So then I started getting pens and toothbrushes and I tried sticking them down my throat to make myself throw up. And I remember looking um, at the door and seeing my dog staring at me. And um, even my dog was looking at me funny <laughs> because he was probably thinking, what on earth are you doing? Um, and all that got me was binging again and ending up the next day with a sore throat from sticking things down my throat. Um, so then when I couldn't do that, I just went to binging. Um, and for those of you who don't know what a binge is, it's where you eat a very large amount of food, um, an excessive amount of food, very, very quickly. Um, to the point pretty much where you make yourself sick. And often, for people like me with something called binge eating disorder, um, you do it more than once a day. Um, it's, it's obviously generally done in secret. Most people with eating disorders, I think they think that they're hiding it from people and you think that you're so smart because you're not eating around people but um, or you're trying to look like you're eating normally around people, but I think people pick up on it anyway because you tend to have rituals or you tend to be strict with specific types of food or you're, you're always controlling something around diet and food um, and it generally seems to be about the control. Um, I finally, I struggled on and off. I was binging sometimes five times a day. Um, but anywhere from, you know, two, two to five times a day, every single day, seven days a week. Um, at one point, I would drive from one fast food restaurant to the other, um, and I would get combos at every single restaurant. And I would order two drinks so that I would think that I was fooling the fast food people. God knows why they would even care that I was ordering that much food or who or how many people were gonna eat it. But in my crazy sick eating disorder brain, I thought if I ordered two drinks that I could fool them into thinking that I wasn't eating that much food, um, that I was gonna have another person eat with me. Um, when in reality, I would just take all of the food then and park somewhere where no one could see me and then I would eat it all and then I would go home and eat dinner with my family and pretend like nothing happened and then when they went to bed at night I would sneak back out um, and I would binge again. Um, and obviously it got so bad that I ended up being almost 300 pounds. Um, I tried to fix it but I, I just couldn't. And then I eventually went and I got a proper diagnosis um, of binge eating disorder. Now, most people, when you say eating disorder, only think of anorexia and bulimia. And in my opinion, I don't think that there's enough knowledge on binge eating disorder. And when I was trying to help myself, I couldn't find anything on binge eating disorder. There was absolutely nothing. And it made me feel like my eating disorder didn't even rate. I used to lie awake at night praying that I could just have bulimia or anorexia so that I could fix it. Because 
there was nothing on binge eating disorder, so I didn't know even where to start to fix it. Um, then I went on a wait list to get treatment at a facility. And because I couldn't pay for it, I had to wait for, um, for coverage for it. And for, it's called OHIP coverage. And um, I had to wait for four years on a wait list to finally get a room. And when I finally got in, the first thing that they told me was that they no longer treated binge eating disorder. They only treated anorexia and bulimia and they were only letting me attend that program because they felt bad that I waited for four years. So here I was amongst 15 other women basically dying of anorexia. I was the only person with binge eating disorder and I felt like I was only let in because they felt bad because of pity. And I had no idea what I was doing there or how I was ever going to learn how to fix it because there was no treatment for binge eating disorder anywhere. I waited for four years, um, which is why I wanted to share this with you guys because binge eating disorder is out there and there isn't a whole lot of people who will talk about it um, or places that even treat people with binge eating disorder. So I want you to know that it is completely possible and to not be embarrassed like I was. I, I felt so embarrassed of having binge eating disorder because in my, and be, I was so sick that in my head, at least if I had anorexia or bulimia, I could be smaller. And that is completely um, backwards and sick thinking because you can have an eating disorder at any size. Um, and to be obsessed with wanting to have one of the eating disorders where I was smaller, not thinking, oh hey, an eating disorder is not healthy. I was just concerned that I had the fat eating disorder. In my head, that's, where, that's what I had called it. Um, but it's not true because People of all sizes binge, and people of all sizes have eating disorders. Um, and not just females, also males. And that's also something that gets pushed down. Alongside a binge eating disorder, um, males are often forgotten when eating disorders are talked about. And that was one thing that bothered me when I did start getting therapy, was that some of my classes maybe had one male and they usually dropped out before the classes finished, before the therapy ses session ended because it, it was like men aren't supposed to have eating disorders. So even though there's, there is help out there, sometimes it feels like you're not supposed to have an eating disorder so there isn't help for you. And that's kind of where I felt and I understood some of the males that I went to therapy with how they felt too because it's almost like some of them just don't exist. You're just not supposed to have them. But I ended up, I, I left that um, facility that didn't treat people with binge eating disorder anymore. Um, I, I waited four years and I stayed three days. And I looked around and I knew that that was not the place for me. And I knew that I could do it myself. And when I left, they, you know, the staff said, well, how can you basically, how, how do you think you can do it on your own? And um, I just looked at them and I said, I will do it. I know I'll do it. And I went home and it was rough for a while, but eventually when Kyle and I had our wake up call with our, our health issues, I knew I had to heal from it or it was going to kill me. Um, and I didn't want food to control me anymore. So, um, I just, I started, I bought this book. Um, I had, I had bought a lot of books along the way and I had gone on online and done a lot of research on eating disorders. Um, but this book, and as you can tell, it's pretty beat up and it's tagged and um, the pages are folded. I read this book over and over and over and it is the one that 
helped me start teaching myself how to deal with my emotions and not eat them. Um, it's called It's Not About Food, End Your Obsession with Weight and Food. Um, and it's by two women who struggled with eating disorders, which is another thing because most of the time when you get help for eating disorders, the people helping you, they've never experienced what it's like to have an eating disorder. So these two women did struggle and then they became professionals to help other people um, with their eating disorders. But most of this is their experience and other people's experiences and it teaches you the truth about an eating disorder, which eating is in the title, but an eating disorder, it's not about the food. And this book is 100% correct. Um, for mine, it was about the control. It was the only thing that I felt I could control in my life when I was little. That's what I, I guess, grasped onto to try to help myself get through my my childhood, which was which was tough. I'm sure most people's are, but that's what I used. That's what I turned to. Some people turn to gambling, some people turn to alcohol or drugs. I turned to food and weight, and I used it to try to help myself heal, but instead I broke myself even more. Um, now I can tell you happily that I haven't engaged in my eating disorder in over two and a half years, um, and I don't emotional eat anymore. I don't control my food. I, I'm not strict with certain things. Um, now I'm, I'm eating to fuel my body, to fuel my body to work out, to gain muscle. Um, I love working out and I love being in this body. And most people that have healed from an eating disorder they say that they're recovered. And while technically, yes, you could say that I am, I don't like saying that I'm recovered because once you have an eating disorder, I don't really think you truly ever stop having one. What I think happens is that you stop being defined by your eating disorder because um, those you may not engage in it physically in the food or in the obsession with the scale or the obsession with weight um, or like controlling your food, but sometimes the eating disorder thoughts can sneak back in. The thoughts of being fat or the thoughts of like, um, you know, trying to get you to overeat or trying to get you to use food instead of dealing with stuff, um, that kind of stuff. But the difference is now I'm strong enough to tell the difference between my eating disordered thinking and rational thinking. And I don't give into it anymore, but I still do get them and I know I always will. It's just that you learn how to cope with it better. Um, and I truly believe that secrets keep you sick. So when you don't talk about it and you hide it, it's impossible for you to heal. The only way that I can sit here talking to you now and be open and honest about it is because I want to heal and I am healing and I will always be healing and working on it. Um, and like I said, I don't think it ever goes away 100%, but physically engaging in any of the eating disordered behaviors, I don't anymore and I don't want to. Um, I no longer need food or any of the eating disordered actions to um, deal with life. I've learned and I have support and I've learned how to do it just um, with me, with being, with being strong, with talking myself through it, with being more confident, with um, being open and honest, just always liking food and wanting to try new foods I didn't allow myself any of that. I kept denying and denying until it would backfire and then I would binge. Um, 
now I allow myself, I also have found a way to make it work for me. Um, I, I know that eating structured during the week, eating, you know, fairly similar things, changing it up every once in a while, but eating very similar and eating portioned, measuring everything out, um, that works for me. And allowing myself one day where I get to eat whatever it is that I want, um, not portioning it, that's what works for me. Um, what works for someone else, you know, might be completely different. But um, the one thing too that I wanted to share was that a lot of people have been going onto our cheat days and, and leaving comments that um, we're binge eating and that we're um, like just rude, ignorant things that they don't quite understand because that is nowhere near what a binge is for me. I've explained to you a little bit um, of what my binges used to be like, but binges for me would be constantly all day sneaking it. Um, a binge is generally done in secret and Kyle and I share what we eat with you guys openly because we're not embarrassed of what we eat anymore. I used to be so embarrassed of what I ate, I hid it constantly. Um, when you can be open and honest about liking food, about the kind of food that you eat, about how much you eat, that's not being sick, that's choosing your food. Before food chose me, I let the food control me. Um, I would just use it constantly and because it wasn't actually about the food, I could eat an entire large pizza by myself and then later say that I was hungry and go out and eat two bags of chips and a couple of pints of ice cream um, and then later again, go out to Taco Bell and eat two combos from Taco Bell. Um, and that would be one full day's worth of eating, not including what I ate normally around family and friends to make it look like I was eating normal. Um, those are binges. Those are obsessive amounts of food where you're not even hungry. You're just trying to fill a void. Um, it's not about the food at all. I was always not, I was never satisfied because I wasn't trying to satisfy hunger. Um, I was trying to medicate myself with food. Now, Kyle and I choose, we choose Saturday to eat whatever we would like and we eat honestly, we don't sneak it, um, we don't obsess about it. We don't shove it down our throats. Um, I used to eat when I was binging so fast that I wouldn't chew my food to the point where I would be swallowing chips whole and wake up the next morning with my throat raw because I was trying to get it down so quick to try to fix something that food just couldn't fix. If I were making something hot when I was binging, I would eat it as soon as it came out of the oven or off the stove to the point where I would burn my tongue so bad it would be blistering and peeling because of my binges because I didn't care about hurting myself. I was hurting myself constantly with the binging. I just wanted to try to feel better. Um, we used to go to a fast food restaurant and get food and before the door of the car was even closing or the window if we went through a drive through I would have half of my food down already because I couldn't even wait until we got home to eat the food. I had to eat it and I had to eat constantly so that I could try to fix what was wrong inside thinking that food could do it at some point but I just kept needing more and more food. It never actually helped. Now, when we eat on a cheat day, like I said, we're choosing what we eat. We're choosing to eat until we're satisfied. I chew my food, I savor my food. When you're binging, you don't savor your food. Um, it's, and it's nice to say, hey, 
I like eating a large bowl of cereal with milk and show the entire world on the internet that I'm eating that. Before I would have ate it in secret and I would have ate about six boxes um, and not ever told anybody about it and ate so much so fast that I could have made my stomach burst, um, which is one of the possible fatal side effects that you can do to yourself with binge eating disorder. You can eat so much that you make your stomach burst. Um, you can give yourself a heart attack, a stroke. Um, I gave myself sleep apnea. Um, there are so many things, diabetes, you know, now I'm the healthiest and in the best shape that I've ever been and I feel good and I'm gaining muscle and um, I love eating a cheat day where, you know, I can choose what I like and eat however much I like and know that I'm not going to feel guilty about it and all of my binges before were followed by guilt. I don't feel guilty anymore and I don't feel the need to need to eat treats every day. Um, I can keep food in the house, treats in the house. I could never do that before. I would have to eat everything in the house that was a treat. Um, I couldn't handle it. So th those are the differences between a, a binge eater and somebody who is um, a healthy eater, I guess. I know, you know, that's probably not the best term for it, but um, for me, that's healthy eating for me. That's normal eating for me. And I enjoy doing it that way. Um, and I haven't engaged in my eating disorder, which is amazing because my entire life, since I was five years old, I have, up until age 30. And um, I'm, I'm proud of how far I've come and um, I'm proud of how I eat. I, I've never allowed myself to admit, hey, I like food, I enjoy it. Um, now, you know, like we have tons of food in the house that are treats and I could right now go and eat a box of Pop-Tarts, but I don't want to anymore. On treat day, I, I eat a couple if I want them or if I want a whole box, I'll eat a whole box. But generally, I eat until I'm satisfied and that's just however much it is. Um, it's no longer binging and shoving in secret. It's chewing and savoring and enjoying and having fun um, and enjoying it with my husband. It's not in secret anymore. It's not um, a sick mental illness anymore. I'm, you know, I, I'm recovering. I will be for the rest <laughs> of my life. I'm back with a friend. Um, I just wanted to show you guys this. Um, this was one of my diaries. As I recovered, um, as I, you know, got healthier, I'm gonna use the term recovered just because it's easier. Um, but as I recovered, I got rid of a lot of my eating disordered stuff. Um, a lot of my books, a lot of my self-help books, my therapy books, um, I used to write in diaries and I, I got rid of a lot, but I kept this one. And I just wanted to show you how serious that an eating disorder can be when you have a healing diary, one that you're supposed to write in to help you heal. And inside is the calorie count for food. Um, so it, show, it breaks down even the calorie count for spinach. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys a little bit, don't mind my messy printing, but um, in a diary where I was trying to heal from an eating disorder, I was still so affected by it that I started writing calorie counts for food. Um, then I also wanted to share with you um, a poem that I wrote when I was really, really struggling. Um, I titled it Last Breath, um, and I think I wrote this about five years ago, six years ago. Um, Chained to a world of darkness, consumed by my obsession, suffocated by judgment, struggling to escape, 
This place I have created, these walls that I have built, drowning in a pool of measurements and fat grams. I don't belong here. I will not be defeated. I will fight to stay above water. Ed will not take my last breath. And um, for those of you that don't know, Ed, um, in the eating disorder world where people are recovering, um, we often refer to our eating disorder as Ed for short. Um, sometimes through therapy, you almost humanize it and, and refer to Ed and write letters to Ed. Um, it's therapeutic and it helps. So that's what Ed meant. And um, whenever I was, even when I was struggling, I always tried to end my poems with that I will not be beat. And Ed has tried to beat me for almost 30 years and it won't hasn't, never will. Um, so anybody out there that's struggling, if I can do it, you can do it. And um, you know, now Kyle and I have this channel and we're helping people and we're helping people do it, you know, in a way that I felt we did it in a healthy way for us. And um, you know, you guys inspire us to keep going and this was one part of my journey that I wanted to wait for until I was completely ready. And secrets do keep you sick, so when you can finally admit it, you know, that means you're, you're doing good. So, yeah, I, I no longer, I, I am recovered from my eating disorder, I will always have to battle the the thoughts um, but I no longer binge I no longer engage in any eating disorder behavior and that's a huge step for me and I enjoy food and I enjoy eating you know fairly clean and structured during the week and having one day where I can eat what I like and I'm starting to like my body, imperfections and all. Um, I use the extra skin that I have to remind myself of how far I, come, I have come. Um, I use all my old pictures to remind myself. I keep some things around, like I said, um, to show myself and remind myself how far I've come. And um, I don't let any negative comment get me down because I know who I am. And I know that the way that I do things for myself is exactly the way I need to do them. So don't let anybody judge you or put you down or make you feel bad. Um, you will struggle to recover through an eating disorder. It's not easy. You will relapse many, many times. Um, it's emotional. It's messy. <laughs> but you can do it. And... Um, you can heal. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, sorry, it's, it's emotional, even though I've shared this many times, I've never done it on the internet. <laughs> so, just know that, you know, you can get through it. I healed from an eating disorder and lost 130 pounds and I kept it off and I no longer engage in my eating disorder and I now have a really healthy happy life so just know that you can do it um, and that's it <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching um, I appreciate we appreciate all of your support and don't forget to check us out on Instagram and to like and subscribe. Um, and if you have any questions or if you need support, please feel free to reach out because we know what it's like to struggle. Um, and just know that you're not alone. There's no fist of doom today. Bye guys.